In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, with the grace of God, we accomplished another beautiful service of the Holy Unction. Glory be to God. It's a beautiful service. And in one of the Gospels, he's having a discussion with a young fellow about who is our neighbor. And many times we are facing this situation. And when things are happening elsewhere and doesn't affect us directly, we are saying that, oh, thank God it's not me, right? We are, he we are hearing of shooting. We are hearing of different other crazy things. But we are glad that is not us and we are doing nothing, right? But he addressed to us the question, right? who is our neighbor? And he told us, who is our neighbor? But it seems that we're not listening because we are not seeing in our brothers and sisters than our neighbor. We are not seeing our neighbor in our husband or wife. We are not seeing our neighbor in our, in our children, in our days. We are not seeing God anywhere anymore because we are so egotistic and self-centered that we cannot see the suffer of others anymore because of all these rights we have rights that's all we know it's my right right and this is what oh it's my right i i gotta fight for it so but we forgot that our first right is to be sons and daughters of the Most High God, and we are not looking at that at all. We are taking any other rights, the civil rights, right? But we are not fighting for the rights of being sons of God, of being the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, because we cannot see God, even in ourselves. We are looking in the morning in the mirror. Do we see God, Christ in, in, in the mirror? If not, then we are doing something wrong. If we are not seeing in Christ in the faces of those that are surrounding us, then we are doing something wrong. That's why we are living the way we are living, because we lost the meaning of love. We lost the meaning of respect. We have no virtues today, but we have rights. This is all we have, nothing else but rights we have. You know, there was a, a family. They had a young daughter. As every young fellow at some point are leaving their home and going either to study or to work on, on their own. So this young girl went to work but you know always there is a huge bond between mother and her children it's less between the father and the children because the father usually is there to provide right usually the mother spends more time with them so she was talking with her daughter every day, several times a day. One night before to go to bed, they, they, they talking as we, they, they were talking, she said to her mom, mom, I, I, I got to close the phone. Somebody's uh, knocking in my door, probably is my friends. So it was kind of late and the mother didn't like that at all. That late friends coming over, it's not good, it's not a good sign. So, but she went to, to bed. 
but her heart was beating heavy. She had a feeling that something is not okay. She told her husband, listen, I have a feeling that our daughter is not okay. He said, oh, you with your feelings always, you know, you women always have these feelings and come on, you're making up stories and stuff. Go to sleep. He said, I can't. Come on, forget. Go to sleep. She's fine. She tried, but she could not sleep. It was like three in the morning. She, she was she she, wa she wanted to call her, but she thought, well, if she if she's sleeping, so I'm going to sleep her up. Became four. No, she said, I'm going to I'm going to call again. I'm going crazy. She's calling. Nobody's answering. She's insisting. Nobody's answering. She wakes up her husband, the things aren't, aren't good. I was right. Come on, maybe she's sleeping. Maybe the, she, she forgot to char charge her battery. No, wake up. They found a phone of one of her friends. She went to knock in the door, said nobody's answering. So they jumped in the car and went to our drive to the university where she was living. To, they had the key, they opened, and everything was upside down in the house. I said, see, I was right. She started crying. I told you, you didn't listen to me. So they called immediately the, the police. They started investigating. And a uh, couple hours later, they found her dead body. And a little later, they found the, the friends that killed her. So now was the time of justice, right? So, and the mother was asking that they would pay the same price, the sentence of death for them. And it was the Holy Week, Holy Thursday. She, after this, like, she didn't want to hear about church, <coughs> about anything. But, you know, Holy Thursday, the procession with the Holy Cross. Her husband said, come on, let's go to, to church, let's pray, we need this. Well, finally she decided to go. So, you know, you know that uh, after the sixth gospel, we bring out the Holy Cross, we do the procession, and after the priest and the uh, altar boys and the altar, the altar service are venerating, everybody comes and venerates the cross. So it's her, it's her turn. She's staring at the cross, and she's having a vision. She's seeing the crucifixion, the real crucifixion of, of Christ. She was taken back in time. And she's seeing Christ. She's seeing her mother and the other women that were with her, with, with his mother. And she was looking, staring at him on the cross saying, why, why are you supporting all of this? Can you scatter them all? And he said, no, that's the reason I came for. I came to save all of these that you see that they are screaming to crucify me. And you too. But she said, well, I can't forgive. I can't forgive, they have to pay the price. And he said, if, if you don't forgive, you have no place with me. And he said, no, I can't. I can't do this. I, I don't know how, how your mother is staying there and not, not doing anything. And he said, ask her. And she's saying, we have to forgive. Because love means forgiveness. If we do not forgive, we have no place with him. And he's 
sacrifice, it will be in vain if we're not following his example. <coughs> I'm not like you. I can't do this. They have to pay the price. She was insisting that the murders of her daughter had to pay the price. And Jesus turned his face and said, then, I'm sorry, but you have no place with me. And said, but I will give you one more chance. Look there. And with the mother of God, with her daughter, she comes out. Said, Mom, forgive them. They actually did a huge good to me. They, they, they did a good thing for me because now I'm rejoicing with, with God. I'm in a place of light, a place of joy and happiness. And the mother said, no, I can't. I can't forgive them. They have to pay for what they did. And she said, then I'm sorry. Then this is the last time you see me. We will never see each other again. I said, what you're, what you're talking about? I said, didn't you tell me that as Christians we have to always forgive, always act loving towards those that are sinning against us? I said, yes, but this is different. They took your life. They took you from me. And she said, yes, but I'm not yours. I'm his. Because he gave a gift to you to give me back. And he received me now. Why are you, why you are so stubborn? And only when she heard these things, when she said that if you're not forgive, then we will not see each other forever. Forever, this will be the, our last time, the last time you'll, you'll be seeing me and you have no place with us. Only then she started coming to her senses and crying bitterly and said, yes, I forgive. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. God forgive them. And she came back to the reality, to the real time. She was crying so bitterly and... She repented, she confessed, and she asked the judge to forgive them and to release them. So you see the power of forgiveness can change life, can change us. And this is how we shall see Christ in everyone and each one. Because we are not the judges of anyone. God is the supreme judge. And he alone has the authority to take a life or to give a life, right? Or to do anything. We just have to be loving. We have to, to help each other. We have to support each other. Because our goal, our duty is to make it up, to make it home. Because we are like the prodigal son. We left our homeland which is paradise and we are strangers here we do not belong to this land we are here temporarily and our goal is to make it back <clears throat> to be reunited to be reinstalled so let us act like the children of God not like strangers let us act lovingly towards each, each other not like strangers but as brothers and sisters in Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.